So welcome today, and thank you for tuning in to the Lupus Foundation of America's live panel discussion on the hidden costs of lupus. My name is Ashley Holden, and I am one of the health education specialists at the Lupus Foundation of America, and I will be moderating today's session. It's hard to believe that we're nearing the end of Lupus Awareness Month. As you may know, all month long, we featured a different topic each week, ranging from lupus and the kidneys to racial and health disparities in order to highlight some of the often invisible ways that lupus impacts everyday life. This week, we are focusing on the financial impact of lupus. And during today's discussion, you'll hear more about helpful resources and insights from our panelists. But before we begin, let's go over a few housekeeping items. I know that everyone's Zoom controls, features, menus may look a little bit different um, depending on what kind of device you're using, but here's a kind of a screenshot of what it may look like for you. And I also know that it seems as though we've become more familiar with technology over the last year. Um, but in case we have anyone new to Zoom, I'd like to go over just a few things before we get started. Um, so if you'd like to submit any questions for our panelists today, please type them in the Q&A box and you can see that little symbol on your screen. Um, and so that's the best place to ask the, our, your questions for your panelists. That's where that's the only place they'll be able to see those questions. Um, but feel free to use the chat box to say hi and interact with other attendees. We have other LFA staff monitoring both the chat and the Q&A box. We are also recording today's session, so you can watch it at a later date. Um, if you find today's information helpful, you can also share it with um, other lupus warriors out there as well. Let's go ahead and test our Zoom skills with a quick poll as an icebreaker question. So the first question we have today is, if you could have a superpower, which one would you choose? And the options are invisibility, superhuman strength, ability to fly, or you already have a superpower, you're a lupus warrior. And I'll give you about 30 seconds to answer this poll. I'll give you about 15 more seconds. All right, we'll go ahead and wrap that up and let's take a look at those results. So it looks like we have about 30% of our people today would like to be invisible. Nobody would like superhuman strength. About 30% would like to be able to fly and 40% already have a superpower because they're a lupus warrior. That's great. So now that we've got a few housekeeping things out of the way, on behalf of the Lupus Foundation of America, I'm delighted to welcome today's panelists. We have Alan Klein, Chief Development Officer from the Health Wealth Foundation. Carla De La Corda, the Director of User Engagement for Needy Meds. And we also have our own Wendy Rogers, a lupus warrior and a an, um, senior manager and for community outreach and engagement at the Lupus Foundation of America. So today we'll be discussing the various costs that can accompany a lupus diagnosis, such as healthcare and medications, lost work and resources that may help offset some of those costs. A 2016 study published in Nature Reviews Rheumatology found that the average annual direct health care costs of a person with lupus was about $33,000. The study also determined that the average annual productivity cost, which is the lost hours of economic productivity due to lupus, was between approximately $1,200 and $20,000. These estimates may be even higher among people with lupus nephritis and more severe active lupus. 
When it comes to working, a Lupus Foundation of America survey found that two of three people with lupus reported a complete or partial loss of income because they were no longer able to work full time due to complications of lupus. Those with lupus may also be temporarily disabled by the disease or qualify for disability payments. Many of the debilitating symptoms and impacts of lupus can't be seen and can cause those living with the disease to feel a range of different emotions as with many chronic autoimmune diseases. Lupus is often invisible and the costs associated with lupus are often invisible too. As we begin today, I'd like to give our panelists an opportunity to introduce themselves. So I'll go ahead and I'll start with Alan. Would you like to briefly introduce yourself and provide an overview of the HealthWell Foundation? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ashley. Uh, my name is Alan Klein. I'm Chief Development Officer of the HealthWell Foundation. HealthWell Foundation is a national nonprofit whose mission is to provide medication copay and insurance premium assistance to underinsured Americans. We've been around since 2003 and offer assistance across 80 different funds during the time of our existence. And in our existence, we've paid out over $2.1 billion to over 615,000 patients across more than 930,000 grants. And for the last 10 years, we've been fortunate enough to provide financial assistance to the lupus community through our SLE fund. And we look forward to participating in this great panel that the Lupus Foundation has put together. So thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Alan. Thank you for joining us today. And Carla, would you also like to briefly introduce yourself as well as give a brief overview of Needy Meds for us? Oh, Carla, I believe you're on mute. Okay, so one of us was gonna do that and it was me. So that's out of the way. <laughs> so hello everyone. Um, as Ashley said, I'm Carla Delaporta. I'm the Director of User Engagement at Needy Meds and I am so happy to be here. Not only because we have built such a wonderful relationship with the Lupus Foundation of America, but also our partner, the Health Wealth Foundation. So Needy Meds, for those of you that are not familiar with us, we are a national nonprofit founded just shy of two and a half decades ago by a retired family physician, Dr. Richard Sagal, and his friend Libby Overly, who was a medical social worker. Rich is still our president. Now, of course, we have all of our fancy wording about our mission statement, <laughs> which is that we educate and empower those seeking affordable health care. But the way I describe Needy Meds is I say that we are here to connect people to programs free and anonymously that will help them afford their healthcare expenses. And it's really important that we say healthcare expenses because as we all know, there are a lot of healthcare expenses that don't fall neatly under the umbrella of medications. So that's what Needy Meds does. And I look forward to explaining a little bit more about that in today's panel, but we're, I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks so much. Great, thank you so much, Carla. And last, but certainly not least, Wendy, would you mind introducing yourself and briefly sharing a bit about your diagnosis, such as how long you've been diagnosed with lupus? Hi, everybody. I'm so glad to be here as well. And thank you to our other panelists that are gonna address this. I'm Wendy Rogers, and I've been living with lupus now for 21 years. Um, now that I know lupus, it has been probably longer. Um, but I'm so excited to be lending my own experience to the Lupus Foundation of America with support, and, uh, with support programs and education. For me, when I was diagnosed with lupus, it changed my entire uh, life and my whole journey and plans. And we know sometimes the best kept plans do not work out, but I had no clue how impactful this disease could be. I didn't even know what lupus was initially. And so I'm thankful to be partnered and working with the Lupus Foundation of America because it really helped me understand not only how to cope with this disease, but how to empower myself because of these types of partnerships. A little bit about my journey is um, when I was diagnosed, I did have a diagnosis of lupus nephritis, which of course played a huge part on the topic we're talking about today with the hidden costs. So I'll be glad to share how, you know, that influenced my walk. Thank you all. And thank you all so much for joining us and already providing us little bits of great information as we get started. 
And before we jump into our questions for today for our panelists, we do have another poll question for our, our attendees. Give us just a second to see if we can get that poll pulled up for you. Technology is wonderful when it works, right? Just bear with us, that should be coming soon. There we go. So this question that we have here is, what is the biggest financial challenge you or your loved one has experienced related to lupus? And that can include also um, any other kind of chronic conditions you have. And the, the options are healthcare expenses, medication expenses, employment challenges, such as time off, job loss, um, disability, um, just to name a few, or all of the above. And again, we'll give about 15 to 20 seconds for this one, um, if you go ahead and respond to the, the poll for us. Take about 10 more seconds if you haven't already responded and we'll get those the answers to the poll. All right. So it looks like we have 22% that say healthcare expenses, 6% for medication expenses, 22% for employment challenges and 50% of you attending today say all of the above. So it looks like the majority of the responses show that many of you have experienced financial impact due to lupus. And with that, I hope that you will find today's session helpful. And I'd like to go ahead and begin with our first question. Um, and so I know that we covered a little bit of this um, in our introductions, but if there's anything you'd like to add, um, I'll go ahead and open that up. So the first question is, what type of assistance does your organization provide and are you able to provide that assistance to individuals with limited English proficiency? And Alan, I'll go ahead and turn that to you first. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, we provide assistance for medication copay and insurance premiums. So what we hope to do is be the payer of uh, who pays last. So whoever gets a grant from Healthwell walks out of their pharmacy or provider's office or wherever they get their drugs with zero copay obligation. And we do in fact service folks uh, who uh, both speak English and have English as a second language or don't speak English at all. We have resources uh, for them at our contact center uh, for sure in case they want to talk to somebody live. Uh, but it is our hope uh, that nobody has to make a choice between complying with their lupus treatment regimen and paying their rent or buying food or paying any other vital uh, expense that is necessary in order to thrive and live. Uh, so that, that is why we're here. So nobody ever has to make that choice. Most definitely <laughs> important. And Carla, would you like to go over a little bit about the different types of assistance and empowerment and if you're able to um, assist those with limited English proficiency as well? Absolutely, I'd be happy to. And you can hear me this time? Yes, we can. Nailed it, I'm getting better. So, <laughs> so it's my pleasure to talk about that. Um, so Needy Meds, as I had said, we connect people to programs that will help them afford their healthcare expenses. And what that means is if somebody is having trouble affording any type of medication, whether it's a prescription or over-the-counter med, where they're having trouble affording durable medical equipment, maybe they need um, assistance with uh, a commode, purchasing a commode or help with mobility, anything that falls under the huge umbrella of healthcare expenses you turn to Needy Meds and we will do our best to connect you to a program that will help you afford that. And as I also said, we do that free and anonymously. 
So what that means is you can reach out to our website, needymeds.org, or our call center, 1-800-503-6897. And for free, we will try and provide you and any of our users with the information that will connect them to one of their programs. And the reason I say anonymously is you don't have to log into our website and you don't have to give any identifying information to our call center counselors. I am also happy to share that we do have Spanish speaking counselors and on our website, you can find many of our brochures in Spanish and other languages such as Russian and Cambodian. Great, thanks Carla. My pleasure. <laughs> I know that you hit this a little bit, um, but the assistance that Needy Meds provides, is it fair to say that it's available for both those with or without insurance? Absolutely, um, and I really, I really like the, the language and the wording that Alan used, which is to help people thrive and live. I think that's really important. The reason I bring that up is because as I'm sure everybody on this panel knows, we no longer live in a world, I don't know if maybe once we did, where people fall into two buckets of people, those that are insured or those that are uninsured. That's not the way a lot of it works. We find many people in the gray area of underinsured. So that means you may have health insurance, but it's not quite meeting your healthcare needs. So the answer is an enthusiastic and resounding yes. If you are having trouble affording any of your healthcare expenses, whether you have insurance, whether you don't have insurance, or whether like millions of Americans, you fall into that gray underinsured category, reach out to needy meds. And one of the other things that I really want to stress and I say all the time is I'm so thrilled to have the opportunity to share resources about needy meds. And sometimes if you're not familiar with an organization and you're participating in a panel like this, it can feel a little bit overwhelming because there's so much information coming at you. And what I would like to say is, my goal is not at all for everybody to walk away understanding exactly what needy meds is, how to find what they need, remembering what we can help you with. All you have to remember is needy meds is here to help. And we have an 800 number and a website. So check us out. And that's all you need to remember, but thank you. Thanks, Carla. That's great. I love your enthusiasm. And Alan, I will go ahead and I will kind of offer the floor up to you as well. Um, I know that Carla hit this about needy meds, but do you want to talk about the best way to reach the Health Well Foundation, um, if resources are available for those with or without insurance? Um, and also, I know because Carla mentioned this, if there's some type of application process for Health Well, uh, what would that application process be and what type of information would be required for that? Great questions. Thank you, Ashley. And, and it's always hard to follow Carla's enthusiasm for sure. She's the best. Uh, so it is super easy to apply for a grant at Health Well. Uh, and you can do that either online at your own convenience or over the phone. And you can either have any, you can have anybody in your support system help you out with this. So this is a family member, a physician, a nurse, a pharmacist, anybody who has your permission as a patient to help you out with the application uh, is, is able to do so. It is super easy in the sense that there's only a handful of questions that you need to answer. One is uh, because we cover people who, as you mentioned, are underinsured, uh, do you have some kind of primary insurance is number one. So somebody will pay first and then we'll pay everything uh, after that. Number two is, uh, are you taking some uh, prescription medication for lupus that is either FDA approved or compendia listed? Uh, hopefully you are. And if so, that's great. Uh, and number three, do you meet the income threshold? Uh, and for this particular fund, uh, it, it is, uh, and, and most of our funds are around 500% uh, of the federal poverty level. So a household basically, that's, it's up around 90,000 or so. That's, that's basically the upper limit uh, that we look at. Now we adjust that for household size. So if you have a large household, or if you live in a very expensive metropolitan area, we'll definitely adjust that up. And we try and say yes to as many people as is possible. The whole application process takes somewhere between five to eight minutes. 
Uh, so it is really very easy and you get immediate adjudication as to whether or not you meet the criteria right then and there. You don't have to wait. You'll know immediately after you apply whether or not you're in the program. And once you're in the program, you could almost immediately start utilizing your grant. And that grant is good for 12 months. So until, until the 12 month period is over, that grant is gonna be great. And then when it's over, if the funding, if funding is available, you can always reapply for the next 12 months. Wow, great. That's, a, that's amazing that they're able to know that so quickly. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and switch gears just a little bit, and I'm going to um, have the next question for Wendy. And Wendy, if you could share just a bit about your lupus diagnosis and journey and how it impacted your career, such as your ability um, to work or needing to take time off. Thank you. So for me, when I was diagnosed, it was quite shocking because um, everything happened extremely suddenly for me. I had moved to a new state from Texas to California and my uh, goal was to become an eye doctor. So I was actually teaching, which was the other passion of mine, as I was waiting to become a resident so that I could eventually um, apply to optometry school. So I was working on my master's degree in education, enjoying a fun teaching assignment, teaching kids um, as an ESL math and science teacher. Then I started noticing these symptoms. I was always tired. I noticed my hair started falling out. I was having rashes and um, my mobility was changing. It was hard to get up and move. And I was always just, I could never get enough uh, rest. And then one morning I woke up, I couldn't even lift my head from the pillow and that scared me so bad. I went into my primary care physician and when I walked in my vitals were off the chart, particularly my blood pressure. It was 120, 225 over 125. And that whole conversation about how I couldn't move just was kind of you know, thrown out the window and I was diagnosed as a hypertension patient. And so that's kind of where I officially started my journey trying to figure out what's wrong with me. And it was, thankfully it wasn't a long journey because I got involved and did a little bit of research and asked to be tested with lupus. But with that diagnosis came a very aggressive uh, experience with lupus. I ended up in the hospital for six months fighting for my life and my whole functionality and physical health changed suddenly. I was an, an athlete, I was very active. I was a teen pregnancy, but I had an all natural childbirth. And I ended up having, um, losing the ability to walk. I had to do dialysis because I had kidney failure and just a myriad of conditions that I won't go into for the sake of time. But in all of these changes, career wise, I ended up having to actually walk away from my career in teaching. Um, I started you know, having the symptoms, but the following year over the summer, I noticed that I wasn't strong enough to do um, my career and even having the mentality to do it. So I had to have a conversation with my principal and I told her, I said, I can't even tell you what, what I'll be like for this year, but I'm not certain that I can you know, teach. And I was very fortunate that my uh, principal, you know, she really liked my work and she said, well, you know what, we're just going to keep your space open um, until we can figure out whether you can carry on or not. So they had a substitute teacher in my place. But of course, I had to take time off and I had taken so much time off that I didn't have any more sick time. And beautifully, my colleagues and fellow teachers had donated even their sick time so that I would have time off. Um, unfortunately, I could not return to teaching and I ended up having to um, you know, give up that career because now I was facing kidney issues and dialysis, which left the huge question mark, just like we see the purple question mark on the screen over here. That's what my life was like. It was a huge purple question mark due to this condition. So the dream of optometry school, career, uh, goals were all out the window because I don't know what the future really held. Um, so that's kind of how I started off and things changed. And then healthcare wise, I went from just being this regular going for a physical or basic checkups and things to now needing a whole team of specialists, 
which was of course a higher cost specialty um, doctors were more expensive and of course more specialized medicine i wasn't on any medication at all i mean i was i was taking tylenol or leave but now here i was needing specialty medications and especially a specialty treatment like dialysis so the whole journey just changed and it was very shocking to me and a, and a um, huge adjustment for me, which was really um, disappointing and a little uh, frightening. Well, I can't say a little, a lot frightening. Goodness, Wendy, thank you for sharing that. And I'm so glad that you are here to share your story with us and that you know, you're, you seem to be doing a lot better than you were, but really yes. what you shared shows the importance of those with lupus seeing their doctor regularly and really mm -hmm. when you need medication. And so, you know, I'd like to kind of address that and talk about what are some ways um, for people with lupus that they can get assistance seeing a doctor and get assistance with those medications. And Alan, I'll let you go first and, and kind of take the lead on some of those. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, and Wendy, thank you for, for your uh, recap. That, that was very, uh, informative for me. Um, so HealthWell uh, has been fortunate enough to approve almost 12,000 grants over the course of its uh, lupus fund, uh, including for 6,500 um, unique patients. And we, we, we've been fortunate enough to give out about $31 million uh, in total grants through the fund. So the need is unbelievably there. Uh, so uh, what we try to do uh, is, is make sure when we get the funds out, we inform everybody, um, all the stakeholders in our database as quickly as is possible that our fund is open. So immediately, whoever uh, has financial need or is getting a prescription filled or anything of, of the like, uh, they know that they have a resource that is open and available to them. Uh, our lupus fund happens to open and close throughout different points of the calendar year. Um, right now, it happens to be closed uh, every year. More and more patients find us, uh, and uh, more and more of the funds are utilized quicker and quicker, and the need uh, for each individual patient on average continues to go up and up. In fact, the average patient um, utilizes about $3,000 uh, per 12 months in our fund. And that's a chunk of change for, for a lot of folks. $250 a month is quite uh, expensive. Uh, so what we try to do is, is work with others in the, in the stakeholder community, uh, including uh, the Lupus Foundation of America, including Needy Meds, and, and uh, see if we can provide uh, assistance uh, holistically. We happen to be focused on co-pays and insurance premiums on the medication side uh, only. Uh, but if we know that there are other resources out there, we're happy to refer patients uh, via a warm transfer over to those resources out there that we know could be of uh, assistance in other areas as well. Great, thank you, Alan. And Carla, I'll let you chime in here too. Yeah, and once again, I'm gonna steal um, Alan's language of using a warm transfer to friends um, in other organizations. And before I chime in about how needy meds can hopefully help, again, mirroring, Al mirroring Alice, Alan's sentiment about thanking Wendy for taking, her time, taking the time and being so candid about sharing her story that I'm sure resonates with a lot of people. And if that isn't the example why the Lupus Foundation of America uses the term lupus warrior, I honestly don't know what is. So thank you for that. Um, uh, I know we're talking about connecting people to affording their medications and other healthcare costs. And I'm gonna do just a little bit of a deep dive into the Needy Meds website which is simply that you can reach out to needymeds.org and right at the top, there is a navigation bar. And if you click on that healthcare savings tab, about 10 different categories of ways to save on your healthcare expenses will be right there in front of you. And some of them will be ways to save on your medications. And again, that includes brand names, it includes generics and it includes over-the-counter, but it will also help you to find 
programs that will help you afford other healthcare expenses. And that can be anything from mobility devices to syringes, anything really you can think of, turn to needymeds.org and check out that healthcare savings tab or reach out to one of our call center counselors. Um, the, one of the resources I do wanna take a moment to highlight because Ashley talked about um, the importance of getting to a doctor. And Wendy sort of talked about beginning her healthcare journey um, by going to her primary care physician. And sometimes that's an obstacle for people. They don't have a primary care physician. Um, they maybe, maybe financially they're not able to afford one, or maybe they're just not at a convenient location. So I'm happy to tell everybody that under that healthcare savings tab on the bottom, you will find an entire section dedicated to free, low cost and sliding scale clinics. And it's broken down into four categories to make your searches easy. You could of course find medical clinics, but you can also find dental clinics, substance abuse clinics, and mental health clinics. And we have more than 18,000 clinics nationwide in that section. And the great thing is you simply type in a zip code and the results will yield affordable primary care physicians in your area, which is super important. You can even print out a list as well as a map. Now here's the other resource that I wanna mention. Something that users brought to the attention of needy meds many years ago. And I've been in this situation many times myself where people say to me, oh, you just go to the doctor. Oh, you just pop in and go pick up this, this medical equipment need. Oh, you just dot, dot, dot. And I think to myself, you know, the just dot, dot, dot isn't easy for me because I don't have transportation. So we did put together an entire section again under that healthcare savings tab that helps people afford their medically related transportation expenses. So again, go under that healthcare savings tab, look for a clinic in your area, and then check out the transportation expenses section to see if we can also help get you there. And getting back to what Alan said about warm transfers, one of the things we stress all the time is we do our best to help the widest population of people that we possibly can, but we know we can't do it on our own. So we consider not only our users part of our family, and what I mean by that is visit our website, call us, share us on social media, share it with your family, neighbors, and loved ones. But very importantly, we have built a community of like-minded nonprofits that are all working together to help people navigate their healthcare journey. And I'm with two of the ones that we have built those relationships over the course of the years, the Lupus Foundation of America and the Health Wealth Foundation of America. And I'm proud to let our audience know also that both the Lupus Foundation of America and Health Well, they often do webinars on needy meds so that we can showcase their resources. So like Alan said, turn to one of us and if we can help you, we will do our best to do a warm transfer to a partnering friendly organization that can meet a, a need that maybe we can't help you with. Thank you. Thanks, Carla. That was great information. And I love how much everybody can work together to make sure that people get those resources that they need, that we can ultimately hit those goals and try to help as many people as we can and reach them. And you kind of brought up an interesting um, thought to mind, and I know that we had a question come up in the chat, and people are wondering if there's any help available to help pay for therapies that aren't necessarily covered by their insurance. Um, Carla, is that something you know that you have resources listed for? Can you get them connected to places that can help them? That's a great question. We do not have a specific category under healthcare expenses dedicated to that. We only have clinics dedicated to particular populations, but we also do have, again, under that healthcare savings tab, and I'm gonna keep saying healthcare savings tab until nobody can even take it anymore. But again, under that healthcare savings tab, on the top middle, we do have a destination called diagnosis-based assistance programs. So what that means is you find the diagnosis that you're having trouble meeting the healthcare needs for, 
such as lupus and see all of the programs available to you. Those vary greatly. So you can be, maybe you need help affording durable medical equipment. Maybe you need help, for example, as Ashley said, with a particular therapy. So I absolutely would start my search with diagnosis-based assistance programs. And this gives me an opportunity to say a couple of more things. That is, not only if we can't find and meet that need for you that will work to refer you to a partnering organization that can, but we update our website all the time. Programs change all the time. So just because you didn't have luck finding a program that will meet that particular need today, it doesn't mean it won't exist in the future. So be sure to check, ba check back at our website or simply reach out to our call center counselors because sometimes it's just easier to speak with a person. Most definitely. Sometimes it is definitely easier to speak to someone. And Alan, I know that you have different disease specific funds. So if it's not something that's necessarily under lupus, is that still something that you may be able to provide assistance with? Um, if it's not covered, is, are there certain parameters that need to be in place to be covered under the funds? So basically the only parameters uh, that you need to meet are you have to be diagnosed with a disease that we have an open fund for. You have to meet the income threshold uh, and you have to have some primary insurance paying first. Uh, even if they pay a dollar, uh, we'll pay everything else. Uh, so if, if you meet all those criteria and the fund is open, uh, that it, it's a pretty uh, easy methodology to apply for assistance. Uh, and, and again, we are kind of uni focused on the medication copay because of the uh, as everybody in the audience knows, the high cost of medications, they haven't been going down and never have and probably never will. They're only going to continue to rise. Uh, and for chronic diseases like lupus, that is going to be a built-in cost that patients are going to have to pay out of pocket uh, month after month, year after year. Uh, and that that's something that's not necessarily uh, a choice, again, that they, would they should have to make between that and other basic life necessities. So we want to make sure we at least take care of that. So uh, there, there's a portion uh, of, of your life that you can kind of get back uh, through not having to pay for your medication co-pays. There are so many other things uh, that could be uh, paid for. Uh, and hopefully other organizations uh, that we know of and, and Carla knows of uh, that we can at least route you to there and, and do the application process there. So it is a little bit piecemeal from an approach perspective, uh, but uh, I think there's so much financial need in each individual disease area that even if I had unlimited funds, I don't know if I could meet all the need and the demand behind that just for medication copay. So that's why it's so difficult uh, for folks to, to find uh, different measures of, of support at financially for different things other than co medication copay, other than medical devices. Uh, there's, there's just uh, a plethora of stuff out there that they need to find help with. Most definitely, Alan. I completely agree. And, you know, since we just heard about some great resources available, I'd like to get your perspective, Wendy. You know, would you mind sharing a few of your personal experiences of financial impact due to your lupus? You know, I was listening to Carla and Alan, and I was just thinking, wow, I wish I would have known this information when I was diagnosed. I, too, had to use outside equipment. I lost my ability to walk and had to have all kinds of things um, as I went through therapy. I've had a walker, I've had a cane, I've been in a wheelchair, and I actually had to pay for those things. Um, I had to use a company that would deliver those, but you know, I didn't foresee having that type of cost. And then, as I mentioned before, as a person with kidney disease or, or lupus nephritis, there were other costs. I was fortunate that I could do transportation, but I know for many people with lupus, whether you're a lupus nephritis patient or not, um, driving yourself around isn't always the best option or that easy. Um, to get around when you have health care changes. So that's another thing. But one thing I do want to address, even as a person that was insured, was the always the conversation 
and the thought about medication. Going to the pharmacy for me was always so stressful because I was waiting all the time for the shock of what it was gonna cost. Not everything was covered um, for what I needed to take care of my uh, health and manage the issues related to lupus and the things that had changed in me. So there were some things that had almost the full price coverage. And I cannot tell you the times I've had to walk away from the pharmacy without getting the medication. You know, you wanna be a compliant patient but what I want people to understand too, sometimes your lack of compliance is due to lack of finances. And going from having a wonderful career with benefits and a, and a nice salary to living on disability doesn't cut addressing the financial need of, of a condition like lupus. All of us need specialty care. Um, and if you have other issues going on and other diseases going on, it's even more demanding. And so it was hard for me. And I'll tell you, I've even had to choose between, am I gonna get this medication or am I going to go, go buy groceries this week for me and my daughter or my family? You know, those were the questions that, that I had to face. And I know many people with lupus, and it's unfortunate to have to share, it's embarrassing to have to share that because you, you know, you can't believe that a, a, um, a condition or a disease has done this to you and you've worked so hard, you know, to establish yourself. But those are realistic, open, you know, questions and issues that you have. It's very stressful and disheartening to have um, such a challenge financially to do what you need to do to meet your medical needs and manage lupus. Thank you for sharing, Wendy. And I know that you're you're not in the minority. I know that a lot of people with lupus face those same concerns. Right. I know, I know that we're running a little short on time today, but we're sharing such great information. So I do have a couple of last quick questions. And Alan, I wanted to go back um, just quickly and ask if there's any way that people can track when the disease funds are open, when they close. Um, and as we know, many people with lupus have other autoimmune conditions. Can they apply under other disease funds if they're open? Absolutely. God bless you for asking that, Ashley. Um, so we have something that's called real-time fund alerts. So all you have to do is sign up and you can get either an email or a text alert or both whenever our fund opens or closes. Super easy to sign up. All you need is an email address uh, and you register and that really obviates the need for you to have to go to our website and click refresh, refresh, refresh all over uh, until you see that there's a change in status. So it makes it super easy for folks to be able to do that. And anybody that has uh, other conditions uh, other than lupus, uh, if we have an open disease uh, and, it's a, and you have a separate condition, uh, we, you absolutely can apply for that disease. We have many grant recipients who uh, unfortunately are afflicted with more than one disease. And if we happen to have open diseases for more than one uh, that, that you qualify for, absolutely you can apply for. And we know there's comorbidity conditions uh, with, with SLE all the time. And we, we've had autoimmune funds open and, and other general funds like that as well. I highly encourage uh, folks to just go to our website uh, at uh, healthwellfoundation.org uh, sign up for the real-time fund alerts. Pick the funds that you're most interested in. You don't have to sign up for alerts for every single fund. Uh, and then you'll be on the cutting edge of knowing exactly when that fund opens and closes. That's great. That's a wonderful tool to have people be able to use. And I'm seeing in the, the chats, people are absolutely loving hearing your perspective, Wendy. And I think it's really hitting home for them along with hearing these resources. And I just wanted to hit one last thing with you. You know, I understand that you did have to go on disability for a while due to your lupus. And I was just wondering if you could share a little bit about that experience. And if you do have any advice um, for people that are navigating that disability process. First of all, yes, it was difficult to um, have to accept disability, but I was fortunate to, I felt like that was a blessing in disguise to have it. But the advice I wanna leave with people is first of all, take a deep breath and focus on your health. This was something 
that I really had to um, adjust to because I just was like, oh my God, everything's falling apart. But because you have this big change in your health, it's important to give it the attention that it deserves and needs so that you can, you know, come back or find some ability to do what you love or whatever. The other advice I want you to do um, is try to find something that you really enjoy. This is a time for self-reflection too. For me, I uh, got involved with volunteering. That's how I ended up kind of connected to the Lupus Foundation of America and other organizations that were addressing things that affected me. And it gave me a sense of purpose because a lot of times when you find yourself on disability, you find yourself feeling worthless or um, no longer defined because a lot of times we define ourselves by our careers and we're more than that. And so I wanna encourage people to remember that you're more than your career and you're more than lupus too. And the other thing I wanna say is make sure to, to ask for help. It's okay to ask for help. Um, reach out just like we see these two amazing organizations get proactive and look for avenues that can help you, um, especially financially. Have people help you if you don't feel like you are even strong enough to do the searches. That's why it's important for us to have advocates. But the most important thing I wanna leave with everybody is move forward even though your life has taken a pause. You know, you might have to reinvent yourself or even think about um, doing something different, but it's okay. You know, you're still here and you're still able to give to the, you know, society in a wonderful way, but you have to put yourself first. You have to put yourself first and ask for that help. Wendy, that is such a great message and self-care is so important right now, um, more than ever with everything mm -hmm. going on. But I, I am sorry that you had to change your career goals, but I think you're right where you need to be. You always have such <laughs> empowering messages when I hear you speak. So thank you for sharing that. And I'd you're like welcome. to chime in just a little bit here to provide some information and resources for those of you that may be experiencing difficulty working at this time, especially in light of employment difficulties during the pandemic. We recognize that people with lupus may struggle to work, uh, especially during times of flares, and this can lead to exhausting your leave balances or not being able to return to work at all, unfortunately. And so in confronting work-related issues, people with lupus have a valuable resource in the American with Disabilities Act, or ADA, you may hear it called. And so ADA makes it against the law for an employer to discriminate against a qualified individual with a disability for the purposes of administering the law. Um, it's important to know that chronic illness such as lupus is included in there. So the law requires employers to make reasonable accommodations to enable a disabled employee to perform their job. Um, so some examples would include modifications to workstations, assistive equipment, or flexible work schedules. And it's important that um, you do note um, that when it comes to the ADA provisions, they only apply if your employer has been made aware of that disability. Um, some other kind of things to keep in mind, if your employer offers an employee assistance program, EAP, they may be able to assist you with requesting accommodations at your workplace. Another resource that may be able to help is the Job Accommodation Network, or JAN. If your lupus is too disabling to work, you may want to consider the Family and Medical Leave Act, otherwise known as FMLA. And if you're eligible for this benefit, you can take unpaid job protected leave. And finally, another option is Social Security Disability Insurance. Unfortunately, I know that we're already over, but I'd like to give us time for one last question. And that question is, is based on your experience, what is the number one piece of advice you would give to someone struggling to manage the cost and financial impact of lupus? And Wendy, I'll start with you. Well, I think I touched on that. I think it's important for you to explore your options. We have two great options right, right here. And I think you have to let down the walls of fear and feeling you know, less than, because it's embarrassing. Um, sometimes to know that you don't, you're not able to afford things like you used to be able to, but ask for help. 
get help. Look into the resources you can. There's places and nooks and crannies everywhere. And so take advantage of those things. Look and take advantage. Great. And Carla, I'll go to you next. So I really, it's, I think the advice that Wendy has given, and as you said, it's clearly resonating, resonating with our audience is very empowering. And I think also importantly, empowering to anybody dealing with any medical conditions or chronic, chronic diseases, right? Um, but I would say that again, just mirroring what the advice that Wendy gave, that is if you are in need, start advocating for yourself by reaching out to organizations that you've heard of, such as the Lupus Foundation of America, Healthwell Foundation, and Needy Meds. Because I think something that gets lost in the process, and I am no expert, I can just share this on behalf of my own experience and some anecdotal responses we heard from Needy Meds users, is people forget the fact that once they start advocating for themselves and reaching out for help, Hopefully, they will achieve that goal by getting the help they need. But simply taking those steps to begin advocating yourself for yourself, that in and of itself makes you feel empowered and makes you feel like maybe I can take the next step and maybe I can take the next step. And before you know it, you've built a network of organizations that can help you. And Alan used the, the term piecemeal about um, piecing things together to get the support you need. But there are tons of organizations that can help people do that. And the other thing I wanna stress is, you don't have to be struggling horribly with finances and you don't have to be struggling with a particular chronic disability to reach out to needy meds, for example because we may be able to help you afford a healthcare expense that you didn't even know was available out there. And maybe you're not in financial dire straits, but maybe it will help you to free up some, some areas of your budget. So I would absolutely just stress what Wendy said, which is just reach out to organizations and start building that network. I think that's the most crucial thing. Most definitely. And Alan, we'll give you the last piece of advice for today. That's a lot of pressure, Ashley. Um, <laughs> but what I would say is um, the Lupus Foundation of America is probably the best catch-all for everybody with lupus to kind of start with and, and go to. Um, I, I, I'm fortunate to work with so many different organizations <laughs> in so many different disease areas. Uh, and LFA has been one of the most responsive forward-thinking organizations in, in almost all of the disease areas that we're fortunate enough to work with. So I encourage all patients and stakeholders of patients to go to LFA first because they probably will be able to point you to different directions. It's their job to look after as a patient advocacy organization, the entire patient stakeholder community for, for lupus. And I think they do a great job uh, of asserting where you may be able to go for help. So they're, they're fantastic, and I couldn't say enough great things about them. Thank you so much, Alan. That means so much, and we feel the exact same way about all of our partner organizations as well. And we thank you all so much for sharing these great resources today. And so as we close out today, I want to reiterate what was mentioned and just let you know that there's help available through these resources, such as the Health Well Foundation, and needy meds. You can also visit our National Resource Center on Lupus to find links to various financial assistance resources. And you can find all of these links on the slide that's um, up today. But many of our resources are also available in Spanish. I also want to highlight um, the job accommodation network that I mentioned. If you're having struggles at work or working, need some type of accommodation, they're a great resource. Also, if you are in need of health insurance, please remember that healthcare.gov is an invaluable resource. There's currently a special enrollment period due to COVID-19 in most states. They're allowing people to enroll or, enroll or change plans until August 15th, 2021. You can also use their website to see if you can qualify for Medicaid. 
one thing that I really would like to highlight is that the majority of people that use healthcare.gov are eligible for some type of financial assistance. And thanks to the American Rescue Plan, many Americans are seeing reduced monthly premiums and lower out-of-pocket costs. So those are all really great things. And again, if you need insurance, please see if you can enroll in one of those plans. I also want to mention 211. No matter where you're located in the United States, you can call 211 from your phone. It's the most comprehensive source of information about local resources and services in the country. Most 211 services also have a website for your local 211 where you can find those resources. Finally, you have access to the Lupus Foundation of America's Health Education Specialists. The Health Education Specialists are specially trained to provide people affected by lupus with disease education and information. We can help direct you to helpful resources. We also have a bilingual health education specialist that can provide help in Spanish. May is not over and it's not too late to get involved. We know awareness must also be a year round effort. You can find tools and help to raise Alicia, can I start from the very beginning? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> this is the part Maggie added and I get tongue tied. I'm sorry. No worries. Um, all right, so I'm gonna let you speak last because I know that it's, it's gonna end on me, but let me make sure you're spotlighted. Okay, you're spotlighted. I hope that this is what, I, I hope I'm doing this right, okay. Um, okay. all right, let me mute myself and you can go ahead whenever you're ready. Finally, you have access to the Lupus Foundation of America's Health Education Specialists. The Health Education Specialists are specially trained to provide people affected by lupus with disease education and information. We can help direct you to helpful resources. May is not over and it's not too late to get involved. We know awareness must also be a year round effort. You can find tools to help you raise awareness as well as all of the resources and videos from previous weeks on lupus.org slash LAM. On behalf of the Lupus Foundation of America and our attendees, I'd like to thank our panelists for joining us today. We also want to thank you for joining us. We hope you found the information from today's session helpful. And as a reminder, this session was recorded and will be available on lupus.org LAM. Thank you again and have a great day.